Hi, welcome back to Colts KRC. Today we're going to do a bit of a comparison video, what's best to buy between these two. So we have the Radio Master and the Jumper T Light. Reviewed both of these recently on my channel and I said I'd do a comparison video telling you which was better value for money. So they both cost about the same money, they both come in just under £50. The big differences are as follows. This one is full multi protocol, although you can buy it with a single, I think it's a 2250 chip, which is what this has got. This is not available full multi protocol. So if you want to go full multi protocol, you need this one. If you're wanting to fly uh, FR Sky, etc., etc., you need this one. Anything else, well, the decision's already made for you. But the form factor, as you can see, they're very, very similar. They both have a screen. This one has a screen that goes on the top, which is bigger. And this one comes with built-in battery, whereas this one doesn't. So let's talk about this one first, and then we'll move on to this, and I'll tell you what I think. So, this is the tea light. You've seen this before. Let's click it on. I did a full review of it. If you want to go back, you can check that in my channel. And... I'm a little bit unsure. I'm still a little bit unsure about it. Form factor is good. It's nice in your hand. It's a good size. The screen's small, but I can manage with it. But for some people, that screen may be a little bit small. It has the trim functions on the front, which I like, but I don't like the way they've been placed. But all in all, it's a great apart from the fact the layout of the switches, and that's because if you're holding it, you up here, it's very very easy to catch your switches when you're flying. But, you've got to remember, £50 for 50 quid. yeah, it's great, really is nice. The sticks feel okay, it has got Hall Effect gimbals, they're not, uh, well, it's difficult to say because they're not good, they don't feel as good as a more expensive set, let's put it that way, but you've not got a problem flying with this. I've been flying Cine Whoops and that type of thing with it and had no issue whatsoever, and range-wise, it's what you'd expect, about a kilometre, maybe just a little bit under. This one has a module bay on the back, so you can attach, you get another piece that goes in here and then you attach your modules. Now you can put crossfire on it, the problem you've got is that crossfire uses too much voltage. So it will not perform very well with this battery unless you're running crossfire on 25 milliwatt, and in which case you're not really having any much of a gain. But you can run crossfire on it. There is some things you can do, you can set some different preferences in Crossfire to make it a little bit better or you can buy the best quality battery you can buy and you can have a few flights before it goes dead. So all in all, I like the texture, it's got a rubberized coating, some people do it and that rubberized coating will come off and already I've started to wear out the writing on here and I've hardly used it much to be honest. And that's about it really, what, what more can you say? It runs on an 18650 as I've said. It is fully compatible with OpenTX, so you can, whatever you can do on your normal OpenTX, you can do with this one. And it's just a nice budget radio. This is the Radio Master that I reviewed the other day. Now I've been using this as well, and I've had probably as many flights on this as I have on, let me take a jump off, otherwise it'll be flat or whatever, I'm a bit wondering why. And I'm not sure. So this one obviously doesn't come with multi protocol so you can only fly this on FR Sky but it comes with a built in battery and it's got a much better switch placement much more nicer to hold in your hand but it hasn't got that nice rubberized coat it's very plastic feeling and as such doesn't quite feel as nice in your hand but it's a bit fatter which I like so it's a bit hard to say so comfortable wise for holding it and not getting the switches is better but I like the coating of the other one better this one has a bigger screen but this is one of the things I hate most about this transmitter. The screen is horrible. This mounting, and that's as tight as it ever goes, and clip in the back of here, is the strangest design ever. Why they didn't permanently mount the screen in the top on a flap that you can fold it down, it doesn't even fold flush. Because this is too far, this is too close. If they'd have brought this bit out slightly, you could have folded that screen in. You can't even fold the screen in. Um, Again, it's 50 quid, so what, what do you actually want for your money, you know what I mean? It does what it's supposed to do. These little holders on the back of here to press your fingers on are great if you had fingernails. I, even with fingernails, my wife struggles to get them out. I just think they're a poor design. They should have had something there that you could just pull down. 
and obviously you cannot fit any module on the back of this. So they fitted the pins on the back of here. Why they haven't made it multi-purpose so you can take this off and run a module bay on the back, I do not know, but they didn't. The screen is needed to set up on OpenTX. It runs full version of OpenTX, which is good, and the gimbals, I think, feel better on this than they do on the jumper. And I don't, if you look closely, you'll see that the size of the gimbals is slightly bigger. I think they're slightly, they might not be, it might be up to an illusion. When I took the back off both, these ones look slightly bigger, but they certainly feel better to me anyway. I have more stiffness in the springs. I can adjust them better than I can on this. Some people prefer slack springs. I prefer quite a little bit of, not balance, but I like a bit of spring in the feel. And again, it's 50 quid. It's got a built-in battery and it flies a fast guy. Same kind of range, I didn't know it's anything different, even though this has got an internal aerial and the other one doesn't. I didn't really notice a difference flying them both, to be honest. Felt probably about the same. So, it's difficult. If you wanted me to recommend one, I'd probably have to say this one. I'm keeping neither, because neither of them are going to be for my needs. And I probably knew that when I bought them, the idea was to buy them. I'd do a review and see if I like them, and I could just maybe keep one to have as a one to just throw in my bag or just to fly. So anyway, but I already have a Tango 2, which I love, and I put a multi protocol module on the back, and I also have Tracer. So I have two that can click in and out. And I've been running that on Tracer and I love that transmitter. So that's the transmitter I'm sticking with. So I'll be getting rid of both of these. And that's not because they're rubbish, it's just because they don't really fit my needs. If these were £100, the review would be totally different. I'd be saying buy neither. At £50, it's your choice. Go which one feels better in your hand, to be fair, because they both do about the same thing. I would go with this because of the fact it's multi protocol. If you can, you could go with their bigger brothers. So this is the jumper. This is a light version. So this is the cheapest one to do. This comes in at just under a hundred, I think. If you shop around for it, um, people maybe won't like this because of the form Welcome factor. So this is a fully fledged radio. Switch warning. This is really nice. I can't really tell the difference between this and the radio master. People say this is radio master a lot better. To me, both about the same. Don't notice any difference. So this comes in around a hundred or just under, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, you'll have to check. But to me, this is what I'd go for. But I totally understand a lot of people like the form factor of this. And so there are the differences. So this is the both jumper and you can see the differences, it's huge. But again, it's your choice. And then of course we have the Radio Master. So big brother to this one. Now both of these in the line have a T12 transmitter, which I haven't reviewed, but I did own the T12 transmitter that was made by Jumper some time ago, and I really liked it. Radio Master do one, and that comes in around £50 price mark as well. If you're in the UK for more man tech, I'd probably recommend that as well. But this is the daddy of all. Welcome to OpenTS. So this is what... Uh, I tend to flick, so if I find Crossfire, I tend to use this, and when I'm using Tracer, I use the Tango 2. But I must admit, I've started leaning more towards the Tango 2 recently, and I don't really know why that is, because I think the 6 feel better on this than they do on the Tango 2. This one's been blinged up, as you can see, it's not a black. This was just a standard, um, when I say standard, it was the version that came that had the touch, it's got the touch screen and everything, the whole effects. But I've done all this to it. And if you remember when you when I did the video, I bought this as a Mac pack. So this came with three receivers and the crossfire unit for the back. I thought it was great value at just under 200 or just around 200. If you watch a video, it might be missed slightly more. A long time ago, my memory is shocking. But it was around that kind of figure. And I do love these. So I prefer this size of transmitter, even though I've been flying on the Tango 2. I still pull the form factor for both of these. I'll just make that clear. I like the Tango 2 for the reasons, but from form factor point of view, I'm old school and I prefer the big radios. So I hope that's been some kind of help. But the message to get across here is you don't need to pay a lot to get a decent transmitter these days. You can The budget market is great. Don't buy the B to F P V one without the screen. They're just rubbish. And don't buy the Radio Master version of this for 10 or less with no screen, no noisy setup. Not worth the money. 
they're certainly the best entry levels and again I'm recommending the Radio Master T12 even though I can't show it in the dot on it because it's going to be the Jumper T12 first identical which I did own and I liked. You've also then got the market so for a hundred quid or just over a hundred I think the Radio Master comes in about 120 for the normal black version of this with a touch screen and everything else when the new version of Betaflight if it um, OpenTX comes out and does support a touch screen technology it'll already be there. So basically there's a lot to look forward to in the hobby and a lot of cheap, better quality stuff come out recently. Uh, obviously, more to come. Uh, quick little update, I have got another goggle video. Yes, I bought another set of goggles. I now have the Sky 04X goggles, which are amazing. So when I do, a, it's not really going to do a review, I'm just going to tell you my feelings about them really, but it's going to be come to no shock to anybody that they're awesome. They really are nice. So I've got that coming up. I've also got a budget, my favourite budget battery charger. Battery charger for under 20 quid, that's far better than anything you're going to get in the package when you get one of these uh, all-in-one combos where you get transmit to the battery charger. The, goggles this is 16 quid it comes in at fantastic i'll have a review on that well not a review kind of just to show an overview of the product couple of minute video so they're coming up in the next sort of week to 10 days and then i've got some off-flight videos coming up the weather's improved so i'll be out flying which means i'll be like making less videos what i will do so is put up a video every now and then and i'll probably do if i go for like four quads i might just do a quick video of the flight footage from the four that I fly that day, put on screen and tell you what they are. And we'll go from there. So, thank you ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.